Today, we're going to be talking about truth matters. We're going to be talking about overlays, overlays, promise, conformist, compliance, and so much more. But how do they actually impact the user's experience? Do overlays deliver on what they promise? And where should the conversation go from here? So we're gonna be doing a few things. I've got some slides that I'm gonna be talking through and then some demos I'm gonna be walking through. And those demos are going to be live. Um, and so of course, with any live demo, who knows what may happen? So this will be uh, hopefully a fun, but interesting adventure for you as we go through these things. So let's go ahead and get started. Ryan already gave you a great introduction of me. My name is Steve Sawson. I've been in the field of accessibility for 20 plus years uh, professionally, although I consider myself sort of a lifelong uh, person in the field in that I've been, I was born blind. And so for me, accessibility has long been a way of life. And um, so, you know, I've, I've, like everyone, have built up experiences over time, some positive and some negative. And so I come from two aspects, both the professional aspect of, of an accessibility professional, but also the personal aspect of, you know, a blind guy who uses this stuff every day. And while mine is certainly not the only opinion out there, uh, you know, it it is the opinion of someone who for many years has used technologies and a number of technologies. So let's go ahead and get started. What are overlays? Overlays are a broad term for technologies that aid to improve accessibility of website. They apply third-party source code, often via JavaScript, to make improvements to the front end of the website. I got this from the overlay fact sheet, and it's a great quote in part because uh, it's very well well said. It's uh, extremely uh, descriptive for what it is, and uh, we'll be talking about that as a resource later on. But for those that are not familiar with it, uh, there is a, a fantastic resource which has a lot of information, including that quote. What do overlays claim to add? These differ from overlay provider to overlay provider, but some of the examples uh, is that overlays will claim to simplify reading layout, change color contrast, add text to speech, controls for magnification of text. There's a lot of under the hood stuff too that overlay providers often will promise and in some cases do deliver uh, underlying things that are often driven by uh, AI and things of that sort. Some solutions also claim to fix underlying code. The question that comes to my mind though, is there are some things that no matter how good automation has gotten in the past few years, uh, it simply can't detect reliably. This is why we can't get full conformance or full accessibility when we do uh, just accessibility testing. Let's take as a simple example, images, right? Image recognition has come a long way and we're gonna talk more about that, but it's still not as good as the AI is. It's not as good as what a human is. So if we rely on any sort of automated thing to uh, create accessibility for images, how accurate is that? What about labels and form fields? Uh, certainly we've come a long way. My screen reader, for example, has the ability to try and guess when it needs to uh, what text should be a label. If there's a label that, if, if there's not a label associated with an input field, it gets it right oftentimes, to be fair, but sometimes it gets it wrong. And if we're filling out a form, having a wrong label on a field could be very, very critical. Automated repair of keyboard access is not always reliable. And automated changes to code can cause unexpected results for assistive technology users. This shouldn't surprise anyone. Whenever we change code in a way that is not intended necessarily by the creator of that code, strange things happen. That's the best way to sum that up. 
Let's look at a quick demo uh, video that was produced as part of a um, uh, IBOBS, which was a lawsuit that we'll talk about in a little bit. And this demo is very, very short, but it illustrates how if we have, uh, if we're using color to convey something, how that might work with an overlay or how it did work when this video was created. Like color, 74, image, eyeglass, knockout, heading level one, 10 reviews, color, 10 reviews, knockout, 10 reviews, color. Play. Like color, 74, image, eyeglass, knockout. Like color, 74, Please. image, eyeglass, knockout. Heading level one, 10 reviews. Like color, 74, image, eyeglass, knockout. Heading level one, 10 reviews. I am assuming color. the video is 10 review, coming knockout. through. 10 review, color. Steve, this is Ryan. The video is coming through okay. And, and that time just now, it played through to completion. All right. Uh, did you lose my audio? I did not. Oh, perfect. I lost yours. All right. Stu, should we replay that little clip or we, we got it? I, I, I think we got it. All right. So what we could tell there, um, except for me, because my audio cut out, is that when we are using color and uh, things that aren't accessibly, uh, that an overlay cannot make them necessarily accessible in a reliable way. And in that demo, we saw how it did not make it accessible uh, at all. Let's go ahead and continue. Can an overlay create an accessibility uh, roadblock? And in this little video, we're going to show you, uh, we'll see an example again from iBobs, uh, where an overlay solution did in fact create a roadblock. So something that was intended to create accessibility wound up breaking an accessibility, uh, breaking accessibility. And the interesting thing about this is that. Um, this, this is still happening today, not necessarily on this particular page in this example, but this sort of thing uh, still exists today. Let's go ahead. Voice over on Google, www.ibobs.com, heading, previous, button, refresh page, button, add to collections, button, read aloud, button, accessibility help and statement, link, skip links, region, landmark. Web dialog, close. Accessibility statement, ibobs.com, April 4th, 2000, ibobs. Access close, button. Close accessibility interface. Close accessibility interface. Close accessibility, close accessibility, and close accessibility interface. Close accessibility, close accessibility interface. But close accessibility interface, close accessibility interface, close accessibility interface, button. I call that an accessibility trap or an overlay trap. And while this has improved, I experienced this quite a bit over the past year on a number of different sites. I have come across it on retail sites, in forums, uh, when trying to get support. Uh, I was using a mobile carrier where this was a problem and I, I couldn't log in to pay my bill. Um, you know, it's extremely frustrating when the solution that is supposed to quote, provide accessibility is the solution or is the, is the thing that actually winds up breaking that accessibility. Do overlay widgets reduce automated errors? This is something I wanted to prove uh, before doing this presentation. What I was hoping to do is to show you a sort of before and after, that this is what uh, how many automated errors were detected before an accessibility overlay was enabled. And then here is what happened when an accessibility overlay uh, is enabled. You know, do, does that number decrease? What does that really look like? In researching that, though, I came up with some interesting findings. And this is where I'm going to bravely attempt my first demo and see um, if, if I can show all of you this. But I found this to be a very interesting uh, interesting thing. So let me see if I can change what I'm sharing.
and we should now see a web page on the screen. Ryan, if you can let me know if that showed up and yep. if we can make yeah, sure we're we didn't break the, everything. The thoughts and ramblings of Steve are, are on screen. I need to be more creative, but yes, this is my my blog page, and um, I'll demonstrate here. Starting, uh, we're okay with the feeds and everything. Hopefully, looks great. Good. All right. So, for those of you who are not familiar, Axe is an open source tool developed by DQ Systems, and um, it's gotten a lot of contributions from all over the world. Uh, it is open source. It's free. It's a browser plugin, and I'm just going to demonstrate really quickly how this works. So once you've installed Axe, what you can do is open it up the inspector. And then I'm going to go up to my more tabs up in the top right here because Axe will show up as a tab. And we see I've got a couple of choices here. I've got sources, network, performance, memory, application, security, lighthouse, CSS overview, Axe DevTools and a couple of others. So what we care about is Axe DevTools. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And now I can I can scan all of my page. And we find that I have some issues on my blog. I can own it. Um, I need to fix these things. So Axe has discovered uh, four issues. And so I know what my project is going to be this weekend. So anyway, I am not using an, accessible, uh, an accessibility overlay. Let's go to a site that is. So let me get rid of this inspector. And let's go to. General Electric, GE.com. And building a world that works is GE's tagline. And the first thing that I encounter with my screen reader is use website in a screen reader mode. And it's a button. So let's go ahead and scan this. Let me just do this. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to bring up my inspector. Bring up my tabs. I have sources, network, performance, memory, application, security, lighthouse, and CSS overview. Axe has disappeared. Axe tools is not there. It's gone. So I can't test with Axe. When I first discovered this, I was totally confused. I thought, surely I must have turned off a setting. I disabled the extension. I must have done something. I checked the settings. It's still there. Then I thought, well, obviously, the problem's not me. It's got to be Axe, right? So I went ahead and uninstalled Axe and reinstalled Axe, and it immediately disappeared when I came to uh, the GE homepage. So. Then I went to other pages and made sure that Axe was in fact working and that you know something I've been using for years hadn't suddenly changed in some sort of recent update and it worked fine. I know that Axe, uh, that uh, GE is using the overlay solution provided by Accessibi. And the reason I know this is because if we go to the accessibi.com homepage, uh, that is, if I go, if I do this, I'm just going to do this here. What we've got is uh, they have a carousel that showcases many of their clients, and GE was in that list. What I found, though, is I also couldn't run Axe on the Accessibility site. So let's go back to GE. And while we can't run, while we can't run uh, 
the X plugin on the Accessibility site. I'm sorry, while we can't run the X plugin on the GE site, let's try Wave. So let's, uh, let's see. I don't, I don't want my DevTools. What I want is, Okay, so we're going to run Wave on this. Wave is another extension that you can install in your browser. So I'm going to just go ahead and run that. And Wave reports zero errors. Zero errors, that's pretty amazing. That's really amazing. I'm not jealous because I have three, but uh, they have three color contrast errors, 35 alerts and 154 and the numbers go on and on. I couldn't believe zero errors. That struck me as a little bit odd because every site that I come across has some sort of an error. It's just always the way it is. And in part, it's because sites are constantly changing. Things are constantly updating widgets are pulling a dynamic content and it struck me so strange that a company like general electric which has a pretty dynamic site would have zero errors but that's what wave is showing me here and so i wanted to test this a little bit further so this is what i did let me get wave off here there's another way to test a site with Wave. And the way you do that is you go wave.webaim.org. I need to spell org correctly. There we go. And one of the cool things about this page is you can paste a web page address in like ge.com and now we wait and they'll do the scan from their servers or however they make this magic happen on the back end instead of me uh, as a as a uh, as a as a browser browser plugin notice we now have 15 errors we had zero before 23 contrast errors, 43 alerts, 149, et cetera, et cetera. So suddenly we have errors. Why don't I see those errors? Why is it so inconsistent, right? That inconsistency I think is, is very important. Um, you know, I don't know what Accessibility is doing uh, I don't even know for sure that it is accessible. I know that it seems a little coincidental, but here's what I do know. When I was a child, I was asked one time to clean my room before I could go out and play. And what I decided to do was take all the stuff that was all over the floor, shove it in my closet, and I managed to get the door slammed shut and boom, my room all clean. I go out and played, everything was great until one of my parents opened the closet door. And I learned <clears throat> the hard way that while I may have made the mess disappear, I didn't fix it. I didn't clean it. Making it disappear isn't the same thing as cleaning the mess. Is that what's going on here? I don't know. But the lack of transparency certainly makes me wonder. Now, let me switch back to my PowerPoint. Meanwhile, back on the PowerPoint, I want to show you another example. And this is more of an experiential uh, example, sort of a UX example. This isn't even necessarily a problem with overlays. It's more of an issue of, of 
what can happen in terms of user experience and expectations. Um, so let me go ahead and change this again. All right. One of the sites I looked at uh, was this one, studentloanhero.com. And the reason I chose this site is because student loan payments are going to be resuming. And um, when they do, I bet a lot of people are going to come here. Studentloanhero.com, for those that are not familiar with it, is a great resource site that uh, can provide um, student loan borrowers with information on how to reduce their debt, uh, how to manage their debt. It's a fantastic site. There's a lot of information here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to enable my screen reader audio for you to be able to hear so you can hear what I hear and we'll compare it with what visually is showing up on the page. Speakers left for Logitech G933 gaming wire. All right, so now we have screen reader audio. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. Slower, sl sl slower, slower, slower. Student low. And uh, Ryan, if you could just confirm before I babble on for too much longer that you are in fact <laughs> hearing this. <laughs> I am, yeah, sounds great. Speed is great. Awesome, thank you so much. I did a demo one time where I went 10 whole minutes before someone spoke up and said, you know, we can't see anything and your video is upside down. So I wouldn't, so. I wouldn't do that to you, Steve. <laughs> Appreciate that. Anyway, so using my screen reader, this is the first thing I hear. Same page link skip to main. This website is audio I enabled and is being optimized for accessibility. Additionally, free web personalization tools have been provided via the audio I toolbar, which may be enabled from the accessibility statement link found on this page. All right, that sounds great. I'd love to know that it's being optimized for accessibility. And I would love to enable this audio I toolbar to check that out. So the directions I'm reading tell me that in order to do that, I need to go to the link to the accessibility statement on this page. By the way, I don't believe any of this is showing up visually. So if you are not a screen reader user, I don't think you would know that it's there. Oftentimes these widgets show up off to the side as like a, a floating dot uh, or, or a white dot, that sort of a thing. And you can click on it and you'll have the toolbar options. But if you are relying on this because you are low vision and want to have better visual access to the site, and if these directions are not there for you and you do not see the widget, you do not know it's there. So, um, Fortunately, we're using a screen reader and I can get this text. So now all we need to do is find the accessibility statement and activate this toolbar because that's what we're told we need to do. Accessible main menu button. I'm going to take a shortcut and just look for Visit, accessibility using my screen reader. Jaws home manual. Jaws. Accessibility. Enter. Wrapping oh. to top. This web's. It's not finding it. Let's look for statement. Jaws version. Statement, enter, toolbar, which may be enabled at visited link. All right, found it on the text I just read. Just version two. N, statement, enter, wrapping. So where is this accessibility statement? I'm being directed to go to this accessibility statement to be able to enable it, but I'm not finding the accessibility statement. It's not linked from this page. Maybe it was once upon a time, Access. but it's not there now. Visited. So now we have a choice. Remember, we came to Student Loan Hero to do something probably relating to student debt. But now we're going to have to go on a bit of a treasure hunt to see if we can find the accessibility statement to see if the accessibility statement will let us enable the toolbar so that we can come back here to do whatever it was we wanted to do in the first place. Well, I don't know where the heck the accessibility statement Navi might be, but generally um, accessibility statements and other statements and policies fall under legal. That's often a catch-all sort of place for things. So let's look for legal and see if they have in their footer or somewhere some sort of legal page. Legal. Enter. Link legal. And they do. All right. So let's go ahead to their Space. legal page. Student. Going to let that load. Legal documents and information dash to legal. Legal documents and information. That sounds fantastic and promising. Let's see if this page contains anything called accessibility. Just ver accessibility. 
Enter. Bullet link accessibility statement. Accessibility statement. We have found it. Let's go there. Space. List. With seven items. Accessibility statement link. Access. All right. We found the Page thing. Page has one. We found the statement. We're getting closer. Now we just got to find that toolbar. Let's see where we start here. Accessibility statement heading level one. Heading level one accessibility statement. Heading level one accessibility statement. Accessibility logos graphic. Heading level two, we value digital inclusion in our effort to provide a fully accessible and optimized user experience for all site visitors. StudentLoanHero.com has taken careful measure to ensure an excellent user experience, regardless of the assistive technology being used to access this site or the specific abilities of those individuals seeking access to this site. StudentLoanHero.com is monitored and tested regularly by internal resources and by AudioI, a third-party provider of web accessibility testing and monitoring. As issues of accessibility are identified, results of automated and manual testing are managed through the AudioI registered digital accessibility platform. As now, Ryan, I don't know how much time we have left, but there's a lot of text we could read here, and we're still looking for that toolbar. Um, I think if we keep reading, we might be there by... <laughs> 12 12 30 quarter of two i don't know there's a lot of yeah. stuff here what what i do want to call out actually a, a positive here they're pretty transparent about how they do this they are very transparent that they're using audio i as their vendor uh to assist them in their accessibility journey and i appreciate that i like the transparency um let's go ahead and skim though a little bit audio i accessibility certification heading level three all right what's the certification Heading level three, audio I accessibility certification, audio I certification dash audio I trusted graphic. The audio I certification seal represents a commitment to accessibility and digital inclusion. The audio I certification process involves automatic and manual testing with the goal of maximizing conformance with web content accessibility guidelines left per NWCAG right per 2.1 level AA success success. All right, so they focus on maximizing conformance. Audio possible. AudioI and StudentLoanHero.com continue to collaborate in an ongoing effort to maintain conformance and provide an accessible user experience for all. Well, okay, they continue to collaborate to maintain conformance. We're going to talk a little bit about the definition of conformance, but we might want to come back here and, and do some tests and see if, in fact, conformance in the true definition of the word is, in fact, being maintained. That said, remember, we came here for something to do with student loans. We're accruing interest as we speak. So let's continue our journey for that toolbar. Web accessibility guidelines heading level two. Feedback heading level two. Providing users with a free customizable assistive utility heading level two. Heading, in addition, we provide free web in hand below. Audio I toolbar is not active. All right. Activate audio I toolbar button. Let's. Hit this activate audio I toolbar button. Spell alert. This website is audio I enabled and is being optimized for browse all list with six I link Google Maps accessibility. Deactivate audio I toolbar button. Head to experience the expl heading level. Learn more about the ways in which the I All right, so we have the toolbar activated. I'm not sure what it did. I think it brought up a visual toolbar. I hope that's what it did. Link browse all features. Um, the following those, tools Steve, may be I, I can tell you what's on screen, Steve. So um, we're we're still looking at the accessibility statement page. The the floating action button for for the widget is on screen, uh, but not expanded. I can't see anything inside uh, the audio I toolbar presently. Player. Well. Audio I toolbar. Press Enter or Shift plus equals to open. But. All right. Now I learned that I can press enter or shift equals to open it. Enter audio I toolbar, press enter or shift plus equals to open button to activate close activity panel button, show slide one button to show slide two button to activate. All right, I, I wanna give up. Um, number one, I'm still not sure what the heck to do. And number two, I don't know how to get from here back to where I was. I can go back to home, but if we think about this from a UX perspective, right? I, again, I came here for a specific reason. I wanted to do something. I got here, got directions on how I might be able to have a more improved experience. Those directions didn't work. That's not technically the fault of the overlay provider, right? The overlay provider provided instructions of how to, how to get to their tool. Those instructions don't work. Who knows why? Maybe something changed. Maybe they updated something. We don't know. 
The point though, that I think is really important to make is if an overlay solution is used, it's not the solution because things change. That solution may modify with time. If we're looking at ensuring the experience and that the experience remains consistent, um, we need to make sure that we're updating any directions we provide that, you know, as we make changes, uh, we may also be making changes to that, to that experience that are then out of sync with what's being, uh, what's being provided to the user. So once upon a time, uh, there probably was an accessibility statement link on that page. It may have moved. I don't know what may have happened. All I do know is it isn't there now. And I'm being told to look for it there now, and I can't find it there now. And while we were able to ultimately to find it, and while I was ultimately able to activate it, is this the experience that you would want your users to necessarily have to go through? When I come to a site, well, if a user comes to my site, I'd want their focus to be on me, on my site. If I have to send them down a treasure hunt path, um, they're not paying attention to me. They're not paying attention to the products and services I am offering, right? I had no interest in the accessibility statement. I didn't want to read the legal page. I didn't want to have to figure out how to use this toolbar. All I wanted to do is figure out how to pay down my debt Show in a more effective way. So think about that when we implement overlays, if they're not properly maintained, you know, what impact does that have on the overall user experience? Is that truly a better experience than what we could achieve natively by making our digital properties more accessible? Space. One moment while we switch back to my volume. Sound cards. Number number windows default. All right, we're going to go ahead and. And Steve, I'm just confirming that we no longer hear uh, your screen reader. Yep. That is perfect. We're going to switch back to the PowerPoint. All right, let's go back here. You know, privacy matters, and this is an area that I really don't hear enough discussion about. I really would love to hear more discussion about this. When, when I go to a website, if I activate the button to optimize it for accessibility or enable screen reader mode or whatever the verbiage says, what am I really doing there, right? I don't know. I just am told to activate this button to, to you know, activate screen reader mode or turn on accessibility mode. Is that being tracked somewhere? If I activate that button, am I identifying myself as an assistive technology user and is that being tracked? Am I opting into something? I don't have an opportunity necessarily to know that because I encounter this control before I encounter any privacy statement. I think about this with the cookie warnings that show up everywhere. Um, you know, this site uses cookies by continuing to use the site, you consent to cookies being used or you don't, but you can choose it right now because there's a pop up window that's not going to go away until you choose right we see this all over the place. Um, and uh, it's very useful, you can make an informed choice and then you continue on your way with these accessibility overlays, though I don't really know the choice i'm making. I don't understand what is being optimized. I don't understand what might not be being optimized. I don't understand if I'm opting into something, if I'm opting out of it. And that's another thing, by the way, sometimes overlays will say, hit this keystroke to opt in or this one to opt out. If I hit the opt out one, I've opted out of using that overlay. However, they may know that I've opted out, right? I've hit something, I've taken an action. And so if that action is recorded, even though I've opted out of using the overlay, I may have opted in to something I didn't anticipate opting into. Either way, I'm disclosing that I'm an assistive technology user and I shouldn't need to do that. I don't like that I need to do that. I should have the option of doing that. If I want to do that, that's perfectly fine, but I'm doing that without my consent.
if a process is automated and detects that I'm using assistive technology, in many respects, that's even worse. Because if it detects this, it's already figured out that I'm an assistive technology user and is opting me in not only without my consent, but without any transparency around that either. Let's talk a little bit about AI because I've heard this argument made many times that, you know, if you're against overlays, you're against AI because a lot of these overlay solutions use AI to improve the accessibility. And the magic is that, you know, it's not as clunky and slow as it would be to have a accessibility partner that uses, you know, humans to, to have to partner with you and work with your developers and take up your time and, you know, be involved in your sprints and all this other stuff that, you know, if we can do this with automation and with AI, you know, that's going to be far more cost effective. It's going to be far more uh, awesome. And so if you're anti overlay, clearly you're anti AI. I don't think that's really true. AI has come a long way. And while AI cannot provide full accessibility, um, it does provide a lot of support for users. Think about it. AI can help put users in, more in control of their experience. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and others have made tremendous strides in speech rec. I mean, in well, in speech recognition, but also in um, image recognition. Right? We think about automated captions or uh, any of the voice control stuff that exists. In addition, uh, there's fantastic image recognition capabilities that uh, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, and, and others have, have implemented. And while that's fantastic, it's not foolproof, right? There are still issues with it. It's still evolving. It's evolving at a great pace and it's evolving in exciting ways, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee accessibility. Many screen readers customize also how a site gets presented. And in a, in a way, that's the ultimate in user choice. If I want to uh, have my screen reader announce or not announce certain content, um, you know, that is necessarily AI, but it could be. And as AI evolves, that can also evolve. So that as the user, I am in control and I can have more control over uh, what is presented to me. And the last thing I wanted to point out is that, you know, AI is really helping accessibility in the mobile space with cameras being used now to read printed materials. So again, Apple, Microsoft, Google all have, you know, and others have solutions where I can use my phone and I can use the camera of my phone to take a picture of a document or a page or a fortune cookie. Yes, I tried this with a fortune cookie and it worked. And then the uh, AI on the device will uh, read the text. Again, is it 100%? Absolutely not. It did, however, read my fortune cookie. So, you know, priorities. Um, the point, though, is that using AI, we do have greater accessibility. AI can be used to support accessibility efforts. It can also be used to support user choice. What it cannot be used for, though, is to create accessibility. And so I think that the argument has gotten a bit muddied that while overlays may use AI, the argument isn't whether AI, uh, it, it, whether one is pro or anti AI. The real issue is that AI cannot provide at this point full accessibility. Let's look at some of these sites, uh, these statistics that we were able to generate. 0.63% uh, of the type 1 million sites use overlays. 1.28 of the top 10,000 websites use any of 13 overlay solutions. And I can give more information about how we got to those statistics. But the interesting thing about that is that these numbers are pretty small, but when we think of the amount of sites we're talking about, it is pretty prevalent, right? Um, there also have been arguments made that if you use accessibility overlays, you will not be sued. And what we have discovered is that that is just not true. Now, I'm not going to comment on the uh, legalities of any of these cases. I'm not a legal person. Uh, but when we look at some of these cases that exist, Murphy versus IBOBS, 
San Francisco Lighthouse of the Blind versus ADP. Uh, the IBOBS thing was in 2021, uh, which is when that case was lost. Uh, they settled, ADP and the Lighthouse settled. The usable.net 2021 report shows that 400 companies that have an accessibility overlay on their website have been sued. So think about that, 400 websites. And again, without digging too much into sort of legalities and whatever, the important takeaway from here is that if you think that using an accessibility overlay will shield you from lawsuits, you're wrong. What does the community think? The community has been very vocal about this issue. It really has. Uh, IAAP has made a statement. Um, the National Federation of the Blind has made a statement that was published in Forbes. The overlay fact sheet is a community uh, resource. Over 500 professionals, accessibility professionals, have signed the overlay fact sheet. Uh, so definitely something worth checking out. So the community has been very vocal about this, and um, members in that community in the community have also been very vocal about it. Lucy Greco, yeah. Sorry, Steve, to interrupt. <clears throat> Just want to give you a, a, about a seven minutes until uh, end time. So. Oh my gosh, we have to get to questions. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to skim through this then speedy fast, but uh, we have, uh, and the deck will be also available for anyone that wants these resources and some of the stuff, uh, much of the stuff is linked in this deck and some of these quotes are also linked in this deck, but we have um, some quotes by Lee, uh, Lucy Greco and by Chancy Fleet, who is one of the most amazing people I've had the opportunity to virtually meet. Um, and in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and just say that anything promising full compliance or conformance probably doesn't. In order to conform to WCAG, you need to meet all of the success criterion. If you miss any of them, you don't fully conform. You may partially conform, but you don't fully conform. So anything promising full conformance, uh, it, it probably can't. The last thing I wanna talk about real fast is assumptions. And I know what they say about making assumptions, but I'm a human and so I'm gonna make them anyway. The first assumption that I make when I come across accessibility overlays is that I can't use their site without their help, without the help of the overlay. Now that may be true in some cases, but with screen readers and magnification tools being built into just about every operating system, it's unlikely that someone wouldn't have access anymore to a screen reader or magnification software. Long gone are the days when these things cost hundreds, if not thousands of dollars, and multiple options are available. And so, um, you know, yes, maybe I do need the help, but am I reliant on it? Probably not, not anymore today. The second piece though, is that you can't create digital properties without the assistance of an accessibility overlay. And that I find is unfortunate. Many people uh, have told me that, you know, they have chosen to use an overlay because they don't know how to do accessibility. That's a problem. That's a problem that can be solved. There's lots of ways to solve that. But the issue, the thing is you can solve it yourself. It can be solved step-by-step step in a uh, methodical way. Uh, the solution doesn't have to cause reliance on an accessibility overlay or any other partner. If I had to say one thing, I would say honor user choice and preferences. Users know best. It's good to talk to users. It's good to give users choice, um, but it's good to also honor and respect that the user is probably not using your website is probably not the first website that user has ever used. So the user may already have ways that they prefer to browse, ways that they prefer to consume information. Uh, let's honor that. And of course, never be afraid to talk to your users. Find out what your users like, what they don't like, the same way you would with any other uh, UX research. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over 
to Ryan. If we have any questions, I'm going to leave up a slide with my contact info just so we have it verbally. You can find me on LinkedIn if you search for my name or Steve's Life. That's steves.life, which is my blog, not .com or anything. Um, I'll leave this up here. And of course, the deck will be available later. And I also have resources that I will show as Ryan is asking any questions in the few seconds we have left. Thanks. Thanks so much, Steve. Um, really great presentation and demo and nothing went wrong. So congratulations. <laughs> well, not, um, not yet. We still have time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you never did uh, cancel that student loan or pay down that student loan. So I'm worried about you. I, I wonder how much interest I've accrued, though, in trying to figure out. <laughs> All right. Um, we, we do have some questions. Um, we can maybe get to two, I'm hopeful. Um, so uh, a, a lot of them are following the same theme. Um, and that is sort of along this lines of, is there a situation where you would ever advise the use of an overlay solution to solve accessibility problems? You know, I always I always advise transparency. Um, I think you know the the thought is that hey, accessibility overlays are great as, as sort of a band aid solution. We're going to get to it eventually. I would I would just be upfront and transparent. My thought is users appreciate transparency. They may not like it, but they get it. If if you have a lot of accessibility issues and you say hey, you know we are we're in the process of of making stuff better. We're working on it. If you have any problems, here's what you do. Call this number, you know, send us this email, use this contact form, which by the way, should also be accessible. Um, you know, it's okay to own it, right? It's okay to say, I know things aren't working right. I know we have a ways to go. And, you know, um, here's what you can do though in the meantime, right? It's not an excuse, it's just honesty. And I think there's a lot of transparency in honesty. I think when you use an overlay in that kind of situation, it makes it less transparent. Do, does the company not care about me? Is that why they're using an overlay? Or are they using an overlay because they're in the process of making some change and it's gonna be available in like three weeks or whenever the sprint ends? I don't know that as a user, but I don't wanna think that the company is just not caring about me. It doesn't care about me as a user and it's decided to you know, outsource, as it were, accessibility to an overlay solution so they could be done with me, right? That doesn't make me feel valued. So I'd say no, I'd say go for transparency. Even if it's ugly, at least it's honest. Thanks very much, Steve. I think to, to stay on time, we'll, we'll have to call it at that. Um, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you everyone for, for joining us. Uh, I, I do wanna remind you, there are a lot of uh, fantastic resources and YouTube links and all kinds of things that Steve referenced in his presentation. We will be making that available uh, on this session page very shortly. So come on back and you'll be able to get them. Thanks all. Thank you very much.